welcome all guys to think global education services sat maths class uh, today we're going to be discussing uh, the structure of sat so this is the basic introduction to the sat that you should know so how the topics are divided how the structure is designed what are the timeline what are the scoring so we'll be discussing the entire structure for sat today so let's start guys now your sat is a pen and paper test okay and it has four sections so the first section in your sat is your reading the second section in your sat is writing now basically the first two sections are the verbal part of your sat okay then the third section in your sat is no calculator so basically it's the math section so where the calculator is not allowed so that's why it's called no calculator section then the fourth section of sat comes which is calculator section so here the calculator is allowed that's why it's called a calculator section now the third and fourth section combined are basically the math part so i can say these two are the math section the first two are the verbal section now we have a fifth section also that's actually essay writing so we have an essay writing now guys this is optional okay so whether you may choose to write it or may you may not choose to write it that's totally your call and you can decide this before the test whether you want to write an essay or whether you do not want to write an essay now the sat is a very standardized test so they actually do not deviate they do not change the pattern so it's always fixed now the test will always start like this you have to start with the reading section then you'll go on to the writing section then you'll go on to the no calculator then you go on to the calculator section you cannot change suppose you know sometimes student says i am really good in math so let me start with the math section no you cannot do that your first section will always be reading and then you have to go for writing then you have to go for no calculator and then you have to go for calculator and essay will be the last thing that you will be doing in your sat if you choose to do an essay now let me tell you the time and the number of questions in every particular section in reading you have 52 questions and the time is 65 minutes similarly in writing you have 44 questions and the time is 35 minutes so here the number of questions are more and the time is less now when you move to the math section that is no calculator section here you have 25 questions sorry my bad you have 20 questions so here you have 20 questions and the time is 25 minutes similarly then you move to the calculator section here you have 38 questions and the time is 55 minutes now as i already told you that the structure is fixed so you have to follow the timeline for every individual section so suppose i am in writing i did my writing in 60 minutes so i am left with five more minutes but i cannot use those five minutes in my writing section so it's not like that if i finish my one section early i can move to the next section no you have to stay in your reading section for the first 65 minutes so the first 65 minutes are dedicated to reading then next 35 minutes will be dedicated to writing then next 25 minutes will be dedicated for no calculator and the last 55 minutes will be dedicated to the calculator and then if you choose to write an essay your essay is for 50 minutes so guys this is how the structure is designed it's always like this now let me tell you about the scoring your sat the complete score is out of 1600 that's your complete score that you get out of 1600 here 
it's 50% verbal 50% quant so basically 800 for verbal and 800 for quant so out of 1600 800 for verbal 800 for quant so 50 50% now it varies on a scale of 200 to 800 so the minimum that you can score for a verbal is 200 and maximum is 800 for verbal and quant both and similarly for quant the minimum you can score is 200 and the maximum that you can score is 800 so overall the minimum score that you can get is 400 and the maximum score that you can get is 1600 combining both the sections essay is separately judged now guys uh, as i told you it's a pen and paper test now few things that you should know before you start with your sat first is there is no negative marking in your sat okay so you will not leave a question leaving a question i'll consider it as a crime in your sat okay so nobody will leave any particular question you should mark every question because there is no negative marking. Okay. Now, apart from your main score that you get out of 800. So, uh, guys, today we'll be talking about the scoring of quant in detail. Or I can say we'll be talking about the quant part in detail. Okay, guys. Now, in the quant part, let me first of all tell you the types of questions here. Now, in both the sections, we have two types of questions. And the first type of question is, I can say, it's a multiple choice question. MCQ. Okay. Now, in the no calculator section, you have, so let me say this is third section and let me say this is fourth section. So in your third section, you have out of first 20 questions, first 15 questions will be MCQ. I'll tell you in detail what is MCQ, but just let me tell you the number of questions. So MCQ, there will be 15 questions and the last five questions will be graded. Similarly, in when you move to section number four, out of 38 questions, first 30 questions will be MCQ and the last eight questions will be graded. Now again, guys, it is always fixed. So in section number three, last five will always be graded and the first 15 will always be MCQ. Similarly, in section number four, last eight will always be graded and first 30 will be MCQs. Now, what do we actually mean by MCQ and a graded? Now, guys, uh, you must have already done these MCQ questions, multiple choice questions. So in this particular type of question, there is a question that is given to you. And then based on the question, there are four options designed. So you have to choose one of the options. Either you mark the most exact one or the most appropriate one. So out of those four options, you have to mark any one. Suppose A is my answer, so I'll mark A. So that's called an MCQ. Most of you have tried these questions before. Now the second type of question is grid in. In these kind of questions, there will be a question given to you. And then there will be no options provided. So there will be a grid provided like this. Now in this grid, you have to solve the question to the exact decimal place and fill it in the grid. Suppose my uh, my answer, let's say is one by two. That's my answer. So either I can fill one by two like this one divided by two. That's how I can fill my grid in or I can fill the grid in like this, so 1.2 is nothing but equivalent to 0 0.5. So I can also fill 0 0.5. So here I have to fill, I have to solve the question and then I have to fill it in the grid provided. There will be no option. So in MCQ, I have a leverage that, that I can always look at the options and mark one of them. But in grid ends, I do not have any leverage. Either I know it or I do not know it. There is no options provided. I have to solve the question myself and then I have to fill it in a grid. Okay. So as I told you, there will be 15 MCQs, five grid in, in the third section, there will be 30 MCQ and eight grid in, in the last section. 
always like this in no calculator guys calculator is not allowed you cannot use the calculator in the fourth section you can use the calculator now i told you about the scoring that math is out of 800 that is on a scale of 200 to 800 now let's discuss the math scoring in detail now you see your math is testing you on four skill sets okay so your math is testing you on your four skill sets now the skills is already mentioned okay so let me tell you the skills which are actually tested on your math exam in your SAT. Now they are testing you on your four skill sets. The first skill that they are testing on is, is heart of algebra. Okay. Heart of algebra. Now the second skill set which they are testing you on is problem solving and data analysis. problem solving and data analysis. The third skill set on which they are testing you on, they name it advanced math. Advanced math. And the fourth skill set on which they are testing you on is we, they call it additional topics. additional topics these are the four skill sets on which your SAT is testing you on in your math part now as i already told you your SAT is a very standardized test the number of questions are already fixed in heart of algebra they ask you 19 questions so as you know, I told you that in calculator section, there are 38 questions in no calculator. There are 20. So overall in your maths, there are 58 questions in all, including both the sections. Now out of those 58 questions, 19 questions will be from heart of algebra. 17 questions will be from problem solving and data analysis. 16 questions will be there from advanced mathematics and six questions will be there from additional topics. So that makes 58 questions. It's always fixed. It, they never change that. So if I talk about percentages wise, 33% of your test is from the first skill set. Approximately 29% of your test is from the second skill set. 28% of your test is from the third skill set and that makes approximately 10% of your test from the fourth skill set. Now what uh, I've told you the skill sets, but what are the importance of this skill set? Why they actually give you this skill set? Now guys, as I told you, you get a score out of 800. Apart from the score that you get out of 800, when you see your detailed score report, you also get sub scores. You also get sub scores on these skill sets. I can say on a scale of 0 to 15 for heart of algebra, 0 to 15 on problem solving data analysis. Advanced math also you get a sub score of 0 to 15. They do not give you any sub score for additional topics because there are only six questions involved. Say, they generally do not give uh, the sub score for this, but the sub score for all these three topics or these three skill sets are provided to you. Now, why they actually give you this and why it is important and what is the relevance? You see, if you really want to score good out of 800, you have to score good in all the three skill sets. Four, they do not provide the score, but you cannot ignore this also. You have to score good in all the three. Now, what do I mean by scoring good? That means you should get a separate sub score, you know, the higher sub scores. If you get a good sub scores here, your overall score out of 800 will be good. But if you do not score good in any of the skill sets, your score will drop. Okay. So if I try to tell you with an example, let's say, 
there are two students taking an SAT exam, the first guy and there is another second guy. Now, first guy made four mistakes. The second guy also made four mistakes. The first guy mistakes uh, made all the mistakes in the first skill set that is heart of algebra. So if the four mistakes are in heart of algebra, the score for heart of algebra will be low. Now for the second guy, he made one, one mistake in all the four skill sets. So his score for heart of algebra, problem solving and data analysis, advanced mathematics and additional topics. He make one mistake here, one mistake here, one mistake here, one mistake here. So both the students actually made the same number of mistake, but the first guy make all the mistakes in heart of algebra. So his score here is low. So that means his overall score out of 800 will drop. But for the second guy, because he had made only one, one mistake. So his score or his sub scores will be good. And hence his score out of 800 will also be good. So the point that you need to understand here is you cannot ignore any particular skill set. So if I'm bad in algebra, if I'm bad in linear equations, I cannot say, okay, let me leave linear equations because if you make more mistakes on the same skill set, your sub score will drop. And if your sub score drops, eventually your score out of 800 would also drop. So SAT actually wants you to be good in all the four skill sets. If you are good, if you are scoring good in all the four skill sets, then only you can expect a good sub, a good score out of 800. So I hope this scoring is clear. So guys, this is uh, what the basic structure is. So quick recap guys, eight, the overall score is out of 1600, 800 for verbal, 800 for maths. So we are discussing maths in detail. So the scale, uh, the scale is from 200 to 800. That means the minimum that you can achieve is 400. Maximum you can achieve is 1600. No calculator section, calculator not allowed. Calculator section, calculator is allowed. 20 questions, 25 minutes, 38 questions, 55 minutes. The number of questions, uh, few MCQs, few grid -ins. 15 MCQs, five grid -ins. In section number four, 30 MCQs, eight grid -ins. I told you the types of question MCQ. You have the options provided. So you can mark any one of them. Gradients, there are no options provided. You have to fill your answer in this gradient provided. Now, apart from the overall score, you have these skill sets. I've told you this in detail. Four skill sets. You also get the sub score for every skill set. If you really want to score good out of 800, you have to be good in every skill sets. Okay, so if you ignore any particular skill set, your score will drop in that particular skill set and your overall score will drop. The number of questions are also fixed. Always like this, out of these 58 questions, 19 from the first, 17 from the second, 16 from the third skill set and the last skill set only have six questions. Okay, so we'll talk about these skill sets in detail in the further classes and when we'll discuss them topic wise each. So guys, so that's all from the structure of the SAT. Thank you all guys for thanks.